Good day, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome. Uh, this is the English version of the other video, which is in Dutch, but I'm going to try to do this in English because if I have to write, uh, if I write captions or subtitles or whatever you want to call it, um, I will have blue fingers in the morning, and I don't want to do that. So I'm trying to do it in English. Um, I think my English is pretty good. I like to believe that my English is better than your Dutch, uh, <laughs> but um, um, yeah. So uh, you have to bear with me, and uh, sometimes I do not may have the correct word, but you'll understand. You catch my drift. Um, all right. First of all, the title of this video: We quit farming, and uh, we quit farming in the Netherlands. So to speak, um, I know for certain that one uh, one uh, man, one farmer across the Dutch border uh, knows what we're up to, which is John Stevens. I think of John Stevens. Um, I consider him a friend, and um, I have uh, some contact with him every now and then, um, privately. Um, if you don't uh, watch John Stevens, then go to his channel, John Stevens Maple Grove Farms. Very nice guy. Very good videos. Um, but I'm getting off topic. We sold the farm. We we uh, uh, we quit farming here in the Netherlands. Um, the Dutch viewers, some of the Dutch viewers, uh, saw that uh, we had our farm for sale for almost a year now, and saw that we uh, sold it, and which we did. Um, to get to the point, uh, um, uh, to get to the point where you're going to sell the farm, I will have to tell you a bit of the history which uh, which led to this decision, and that starts in actually it starts in 2012. In uh, 2012, I was dating my current wife, Mrs. Mrs. the Dutch dairy farmer. Um, our old dairy barn was pretty worn out and we had to uh, get a new one, build a new one. Uh, we wanted to do that on the same spot, used uh, uh, manure pits again and uh, build on the old manure pits a new barn with robots, milking robots. At that point my father was still alive, he died in June of 2012 we got married in August of the same year um, we took a look at, at a lot of barns and a lot of uh, robots uh, at that point we chose for the uh, GEA GEA MI1 uh, robot which we still have and it works just fine very good robot um, okay so we built uh, wanted to build a barn at that point in time, uh, we had, um, how I'm going to translate this in my head, <laughs> um, as you all know that every country has uh, rules and regulations for every, uh, every uh, uh, sector in, economic sector in the, in the in their country and a lot of rules and regulations for agriculture and but they are the worst in the Netherlands. At that point in time we had uh, there would be coming uh, uh, animal rights and not animal rights as in uh, uh, the groups that are on they're active in, in on the internet and everywhere else. Um, the right to have an animal, have a agricultural animal, to have a cow, for instance. That was what I was looking for. So the minister at that point we had uh, uh, was saying, "Well, yeah, you're, uh, uh, there are too many cows in the Netherlands. We gonna need those." Permits is a better word. Animal permits uh, for uh, every cow in the Netherlands. If you want to build a new barn, you're gonna build your new barn a little bit bigger so you can grow in the future. And um, 
but when those permits, uh, they weren't there yet, but they were about to come, uh, banks will not give you a mortgage. So, we couldn't uh, uh, get a mortgage, get a loan for a new barn. So we just kept on milking in our old barn, no problems there. Uh, in 2000, June 2012, my father died, uh, passed away, and um, well, my head was somewhere else. Uh, those permits, those animal permits were still above the market, as we like to call it, and we couldn't get a loan. Um, in December 2013, uh, those animal permits went away. They weren't weren't uh, uh, they weren't coming, so um, we could get a mortgage loan for a new barn, which we did. We uh, uh, built this barn which we have now, which is called yeah a Serra Stall. Let me take up to Google Translate. Uh, translate, which is the correct word for Serastal, a greenhouse shed. Um, it just looks like that with all the bows. Um, that was 40,000 euros cheaper as a normal roof. So that uh, is what we built. Um, the loan that we could get was a bit tight and this, the bank said, well, you got to do with that. Okay, fine. So we did. We start building the barn in August 2014. It was completely done in April 2015. Uh, um, and all the European uh, dairy farmers will recall that uh, the milk quota went away. Milk quota was gone, and so everybody and his brother could as milk as many cows and as many milk as they wanted. That had a bit of a negative effect because we got uh, the milk price collapsed. At the lowest point, we got 23 euro cents for one liter of milk. And if you are from the states and you want to know that in gallons, well. You do the math. Um, <laughs> um, but it wasn't a lot of money, and especially not when you are just have a new barn. Um, because you do have to do, get your payments every month. So there was, money was tight. And um, at that point we had a new minister of secretary of state, whatever you want to call it. Um, and uh, she said, because it was a woman, she said... Uh, we have to go back in the amount of the number of cows in the Netherlands. Every country in Europe has a ceiling for the different kinds of cattle. You have a ceiling, uh, a ceiling uh, for phosphate, the phosphate production which cattle uh, does. Uh, uh, yeah. Um, so he has a ceiling for poultry, there's a ceiling for uh, pigs, hogs, and a ceiling for cows. The poultry and the pigs didn't have any problems, but the uh, dairy did, the cows did. We went over that ceiling. That ceiling, uh, that line was crossed in June or July of 2015. So we, and at that point we were in 2016, at that point uh, we had to go back to the numbers of cows we had on in June or July 15, 2015. Um, so we had to, at that point we milked about 90 cows uh, and we had to go back to 65 cows. But we also had to uh, shrink 8.3% more. So that would, that was a bit of a problem. Because when you have a barn for 130 cows and you have 65 cows in it, um, somewhere something is going wrong. You can understand that. Um, we had one uh, tiny bit of luck. We had a lot of young stock. So we sold a lot of young stock. Uh, in calf heifers wasn't a problem. A lot of them went to Russia. Um, but at one point I had um, 8 or 9 or 10 uh, uh, heifer calves from about a year old 
which I couldn't give away even. Nobody wanted them. I couldn't sell them. So they had to go off to the butcher. Uh, and as old as I'm getting, I will never forget that day. Because that hurt bad. There was good, healthy young stock and they just well, they have to go to be they have to go to the slaughterhouse. I didn't like that. I didn't like that at all. But anyhow we played uh, we played uh, uh, according to the rules and uh, we didn't have any choice. Uh, halfway through 2016 the milk price climbed up a little bit and in 2017 we got the phosphate reduction program which meant um, if you had too many cows, still had too many cows at that point you still had to reduce in the number of cows and um, if you didn't you got a fine and the fine was so high that you didn't make any money that month that's how clever these bureaucrats are so okay from that point forward um, we lived from paycheck to paycheck because that's what you gotta do then um, we tried to, uh, uh, Mrs. Dutch Dairy Farmer uh, got a job off the farm, uh, which she didn't have the time for because we have four little children. At that point, we had three. Um, later on, uh, the, our youngest boy was born, Mart. Um, yeah, and we tried to uh, put up second branches uh, on the farm, which for several reasons couldn't uh, couldn't uh, couldn't happen. Later on, we uh, had uh, the farm shop, which worked very good uh, during the the pandemic. But now the pandemic is over, and um, well, yeah, the the, the, the sales uh, went back. So uh, and we we sold the farm, so we stopped doing that. Um, yeah, but, um, and, uh, but what made us come to this decision to sell the farm is that rules and regulations in the lens are getting more and more. We still get more every, I like to say every week. Every week we get a new rule. So we are, we went to look across the border and we went to look to Denmark. And Denmark there are uh, farms for sale. Uh, it has to do with, uh, uh, normally spoken here in the Netherlands, uh, a son uh, takes over the farm from his dad, from his family, and I believe that's normal, pretty normal in England, or now from Great Britain, uh, and in the States, um, but it's not normal in Denmark. In Denmark, a farm uh, gets for sale and the son buys another farm, and dad stays on the old farm. Don't ask me how that all works, but that's the way they do it. Um, so there are farms for sale there, and we visited a lot of farms to buy. Um, but a lot of farms are pretty worn out. A lot of farms are way too big for my taste. Three, four, five hundred cows, that's too big for me. Uh, I don't like that, that kind of numbers. Um, not for me. So. Uh, we, we saw two farms which we liked very much. One was just sold right in front of our nose and the other one was just too expensive. Um, we couldn't earn our money back then. So uh, we don't have a farm just yet. We did sell our farm and at this point in time uh, I have to uh, get the barns both the barns, the dairy barn and the youngstock barn, have to be empty on the uh, April 15th. And uh, I gotta clean them out. With, uh, and uh, so we now are selling cows. We have 19, 18 or 19 left at the moment. The last one, last cows will leave this week. And the youngstock will uh, leave end of coming week or starting next week but then the young stock is gone too so i'll be a dairy farmer without dairy cows um, and i don't like it i really do not like it um, yeah it hurts it just hurts i it, 
there's nothing there's, there's no way around it it just hurts um, but I know it's necessary to uh, make an, a, a new and fresh beginning but I don't like it so that's what's currently going on here um, I would like to take you uh, along on oh I forgot something um, there are more rules coming here in the Netherlands uh, one of the rules is let me go back to Google Translate is uh, land bound Google Translate came up with that land bound agriculture that means yeah uh, if you have uh, one hectare of ground you may milk two cows so if you have 30 hectares you can milk 60 cows and if you have 100 hectares you can milk 200 cows nobody in the Netherlands nah, that's not true a lot of farmers in the Netherlands don't have that um, grounds which are um, where the, the, the nutrients wash out uh, fairly easily um, will be taken out of agriculture if the farmer the owner of that land quits farming he isn't allowed to sell the ground to, to, to uh, the field to uh, of the other farm whatever you want to call it uh, to another farmer the state will buy that farm will buy, the, buy those fields and uh, convert it into nature uh, another thing is um, I forgot about it there's one thing more um, but I'm done I'm really really am done farming in the Netherlands I don't want to work 60 70 hours a week for nothing I don't mind the work I don't mind the job I don't mind the long hours but I do mind that I don't make one penny because that's what's going on uh, like I said we were living from paycheck to paycheck in the last few years and I'm done so if we don't go to another country to farm I'm not going to farm here anymore in the Netherlands but we uh, but we are going uh, to buy another farm and, but we are not sure if that is in Denmark because we cannot find a spot, a place where we think, yeah, that's where we want to live. So uh, we are looking uh, across other borders as well. Um, and um, yeah, so that's what's going on. I would like to take you along on this adventure. Um, if you're interested, hit the subscribe button and ring the little bell. Um, most of the times I will uh, upload a video on Sunday, uh, Sunday evening, Dutch time. Um, that's what I most of the times do. Um, so yeah, um, the videos will uh, what will come uh, next after this in the in the coming coming period will probably be be me cleaning up or repairing stuff which I'm going to sell or not um, uh, which of or which I'm going to take along to another farm uh, that's is what's what's coming up but I like to take you along on this adventure um, so if you're interested hit the subscribe button and um, yeah that's what's going on here uh, thank you for watching and yeah I'll catch you at the next one